Okay, question number 43, this is vertical from, uh, question 43 from your BPP practice kit. Uh, this question is actually about interest rate risk. Um, of course, we are going to uh, read this scenario. Um, idea here is today, I'm not going to solve the question. I've solved many questions before with you people. Uh, what I'm going to do today, I will just make, because I know that there are few areas where students, they get confused. Uh, I mean, when you see the question, you don't understand that, you know, how to use these numbers, where these numbers are coming from. So what is spot rate? What is forward future rate? What is the difference between the strike rate and the future rate? How to calculate if it is not given? Then why do we have two strike prices? What are these numbers? Sometimes you find it difficult to, you know, even though you have the basic, you have the understanding, but uh, you still get indecisive that how to use these numbers. Then sometimes when you go to solution, so I've actually, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to solve the question. I've taken the solution from the book because I know that sometimes students, they even find it difficult. After seeing the solution, they find it difficult where these numbers are coming from. Okay, what is this 96.06, where it is coming from? What is this 94.36, where it is coming from? And this answers usually, solution is so long. There are so many calculations that by the time you go to the end, you actually forgot what you did before. It's such a big picture. So we need to break down it and we need to understand it step by step. Okay, so this is the idea today. Um, so number one thing, what in this situation, what happens that this is a company. So um, we can have a quick reading here actually, or because, uh, or we can just pick up some important areas. Okay, let's have a quick reading. I'll just highlight a few things. I'll just read it fast and we will highlight a few things and then uh, I'll start discussion. It says vertical company, a company based in Eurozone has expanded very rapidly over recent years by a combination of acquiring subsidiaries in foreign countries and setting up its own operations abroad. Operations abroad, okay. Vertical Companies Board has found it increasingly difficult to monitor its activities and vertical companies support functions, including its treasury function. Um, they have struggled to cope up with a greatly increased workload. Vertical's board has decided to restructure the company on a regional basis with regional boards and appropriate support functions. Managers in some of the larger countries in which Vertical company operates are unhappy with reorganization on a regional basis and believe that operations in their in their countries should be given to a should be given a large amount of autonomy and be supported by internal functions organized on a national basis okay now actually this is the part which will become uh, which you will use for the discursive response part which is your requirement b in this scenario okay because so far until here there is no transaction there is no uh, risk management area or, you know, hedging required here. So this is the background information, which usually we use for discussion purpose. Now it says, assume it is now 1st October 2007 or 2017, the central treasury function has just received information about a future transaction by a newly acquired subsidiary in Euria, where the local currency is dinar which is D, the subsidiary expects to receive 27 million dinar on 31st of January 2008. Today it is 1st October 2007. So October, November, December, and end of January. So after four months, they receive 27 million dinars and they are receiving it. Uh, and it wants this money to be invested locally in Euria, which means in the local currency, uh, most probably for five months until 30th June 2008. So now the total period becomes nine months because after four months, you will receive the money and then you want to keep it for another five months. So total period is nine months from today. Yeah. Um, and they want to invest. Now, in you know, uh, in uh, these uh, risk management chapters, especially interest rate risk, um, you always need to be careful 
that are you going to borrow money? Is it a borrowings or so are you in, you know, short of money or you have surplus cash? In this case, it's a surplus cash. It is supposed to be invested um, because your, you know, your choice of the instrument which you are going to use will depend a lot on the risk which you are facing. And the risks change, by the way, because in this case, what is happening that they will have surplus cash of 27 million dinars and they are going to invest. So here, in this case, when you have to invest, so interest rates, if they decrease, this is your risk. Your risk is decreasing interest rates, okay? You are not worried about that what if in the market interest rates go up? If interest rates go up, that's good for you. You are happy because you have to invest money. You have to put money in the bank. You have to receive interest. You don't have to pay interest actually. So in this case, for them, decreasing interest rate is the risk. But if you have to borrow money in another question, and in many questions actually, there is, most questions are about borrowing money that they would be needing 27 million dinars. So they, they, they require to borrow money after three months or four months. So in that case, increasing interest rate is your problem because you are sitting today and you say that after three months, I will go to bank to borrow $10 million. What if interest rate go up at that time? So in this case, you see it is exactly 180 degree opposite. So first, your first thing is that you need to understand because based on that, you will decide whether I'm going long or I'm going short. Going long means I have to buy or I have to sell, okay? So you are, because this is always a choice that what I'm going to do, am I going to go for call options or put options? Because they give you data for both of them. For example, in this particular question, if you see about the options data, <clears throat> if you talk about the data which is given for options, because this question will require, you know, forward uh, FRAs, forward rate agreement, it will require future, it will require options. You have swaps, you might have callers. This question does not involve swaps and callers, but this question, it does involve three things. FRA, you know, this forward rate agreement, or you have futures, or you have options. And when you come to options, you always get stuck. This is call, this is put, and this is the strike price. Okay, so why there are two strike prices? You can take, you can choose both of them, or you can choose any one of them, which is more closer to you. Uh, you can make comparison using both of them. Both options are available. Uh, but the question is that, am I going to use call or am I going to use put? So in this question, because you are thinking like an investor, you have to put money and you have to receive interest. And your problem is, you know, decreasing interest rates. I want to protect myself against decreasing interest rates. So I want to lock interest rate for myself. I'll go for the call option buying the call options. Call options actually require you to buy something at a certain price. So anyways, we'll see uh, the data and then we'll find out. Uh, by the way, why do I say call option? Because the question says that interest rates are expected to go up or go down. Let's see the question now. So, I mean, what I was trying to say that you first, you need to understand what is your situation. Are you going to um, borrow money or are you going to deposit money? So vertical companies treasury team is aware the econom that economic conditions in urea are currently uncertain. The central bank base rate in urea is 4.2 and the treasury team believes that it can invest funds in urea at the central bank rate less 30 basis point. So currently it is 4.2% the central bank rate and the banks will accept. Now, if you see here, it says less 30 basis point. When you borrow money, they say add 30 basis point because this is the stand. This is 4.2% is the rate which is between the banks. This is not the rate for customers. 4.2% is the rate at which the central bank is, you know, dealing with other banks. 
So this is your LIBOR plus 3% kind of here because it is, uh, I know they are not talking about, you can consider the 4.2% as, as, as LIBOR. They are not using the word LIBOR because this is not London interbank rate, this is for urea. So 4.2 is their local rate. Now, because you have to invest money, so the bank will deduct 30 basis points, which means that if you if today you put money in the bank, the bank will give you 3.9% return, okay? If you want to borrow money, so probably they will say, they, they didn't say here, but if the scenario is about borrowing, they would say plus 30 basis points or 40 basis points, and then you say, I can borrow at 4.6%. 4.2 is never your rate. This is the starting point plus minus you need to do because you are investing in the bank. So the bank will give you less than that, 30 basis points. However, treasury staff has have seen predictions that the central bank base rate could increase by up to 1.1% or fall by 0.6% between now and 31st January. 31st January is the time when you receive the cash. So it's a possibility that it may go up or it may go down, okay? So if it goes up 1.1, it becomes 5.3%. And the bank will not give you 30 basis point. They will subtract. So the bank will offer you 5%. Um, or it can fall down by 0.6%, which means 3.6%. It will, so it is 3.6%, um, it may become. And then again, 30 basis point will be subtracted and the bank will give you return of 3.3%. So this is clearly a risk here, okay? And you are talking about 27 million dinars. So either this can happen or this can happen. And the purpose of risk management is that we need to find, we need to secure ourselves. So, um, and by the way, it says up to 30th June. So, February, March, April, May, June for five months. Let me just tell you how much money, the difference are we talking about. It's 27 million, just for the sake of myself, what is the difference between the two extremes? 27 million into 5% into five divided by 12. If the market is like this, I can put this money and I can earn 562,500 dinars. If the market goes down, uh, into 3.3% into 5 divided by 12, I get 371,000 dinars. So this is actually, you know, the two extremes. These are the two possible outcomes. It could happen or it could adjust in between, but the two extremes we have seen. So there's a quite a lot of difference. So, so yeah. I, I small question. Uh, is this caller, like, is this caller also supposed to work? Callers can also work. But in this question, they have not asked. You can ask, you can choose caller, what callers they do, actually. In callers, what happens? That you have, uh, you are in options. So caller is an extension of option. So in option, you are one party, and this is the premium which you have to pay. So if you go for a call option of 94.25 uh, strike price, this is the premium which you have to pay for March. Okay, but in caller, what happens that the premium is split between two parties because options actually like remember, uh, okay, you have asked the question. So let me just have a discussion. See, in options, there is never a loss. I always say that in options, you pay the premium and after paying the premium, there is no additional cost because what will happen that if it suits you, you will exercise the option. If it does not suit you, you will just let it lapse. So in option, there is no loss, but the gains could be unlimited because if the price moves in your favor and it could move in your favor by a great extent, you can make great benefit in options, but it cannot go against you. Because when it going when it is going against you, you are not exercising the option. So that's fantastic deal, okay? Because I have no chances of loss. If there is a loss, I will stay away. And I have an unlimited gain option, unlimited gain possibility. And in order to get this fantastic deal, I need to pay this money. And sometime, so this money is actually 
sometimes it looks great. Uh, I, I mean, it, 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 uh, this option premium, it looks significant. So when you go for callers, this option premium is actually split between two parties because now there are two parties in the deal, you and the other one in callers. So you have higher and lower. So one we will uh, we will do caller question. We'll explain it in more detail. But the only thing which you remember from this screen is that this option premium right now I am the only person and I have to pay this zero point five four five premium, and this is in percentages uh, over you know uh, the number of contracts and so on. Um, but when I get into callers deal. Premium will be split between me and the other party. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, vertical treasury staff normally hedge interest rate exposure by using whichever of the following products is more appropriate. Now, you see, they use the word appropriate. And that's a very subjective term because. Uh, um, and that actually will leave a room for discussion because what looks appropriate to me might not look appropriate to you. Because these three instruments, they will have their own advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to discuss them. Forward rate agreements, interest rate futures, options on interest rate futures. Now, what happens that in FRAs, FRAs, there is no risk, absolutely no risk. So you get a risk-free amount. In FRA, in forward rate agreement, you agree with the bank today that I will come to you on 31st of January and I will put my, so okay, okay you, do, you actually what happens that there are three parties in FRAs. It actually could be two as well, but there are three, there is a triangle relationship it is possible that on these two sides, the same one bank is open, is sitting. This is me, okay? And I put money here, 27 million. And when I will put, I will put it on 31st of January. And what would be the rate? I don't know. And of course, I will put the money in the bank on the spot rate on that particular date. So whatever will be the rate on 31st of January, I will deposit my cash, 27 million, on that rate. I will get that interest rate. So I'm kind of worried that what it will be, if it goes down, I will make a loss. So I make an FRA arrangement with someone else that you fix the rate for me. This Let's suppose that this is bank A. Let's suppose that this is bank B. It could be the same institute as well, but let's suppose that it's a separate party. It's a third party. So I agree with the third party. They say, okay, Today, it is 4.2%. It is expected to go up. It is expected to go down. They do their own calculations. They come, they say, okay, we will give you 5%. I agree with them 5%. And then I go to sleep. I don't care. I will get my 5%. So what will happen that when I go on this day to the bank and I put my money, if the interest rate is less than 5%, and if I'm making any loss, that loss will be covered by them. So I don't make a loss. And if the interest rate goes up in the market and I am getting more than 5%, I will, I will transfer cash to them. I will pay cash to them. I ultimately will be getting my 5% or whatever it is. So it's a fixed amount. There is no risk. Like I said that, what do you mean by appropriate? Because appropriate has a different, you know, uh, for, for example, if you are a risk averse person, if you are a risk averse person, for you, FRA might be appropriate. So in FRA deal, you are getting 5%. In case of interest rate futures, they you, you might go up, you might go down. There is no fixed commitment. Okay, so they could bring you a gain and they can bring you a loss because if the market goes up in opposite direction, you might go into loss, you might go into gain. In options, again, you might have a huge gain, huge gain, but there is a word attached to that, which is called might. It's not guaranteed. So if you are a risk averse person, for you, probably this is more appropriate because it, it fixes the interest rate for you. If you are a risk taking in a risk taking instrument, you are, I mean, 
I wouldn't say risk taking. Actually, options we use when we have, you know, um, I know that market can go up, can go down. It says that market can go up by 1.1% and market can go down by 0.6%. I know. But if I know that the possibility of this thing happening is 70%, and possibility of this thing happening is only 30%. So I might decide to go for that thing. I mean, you know, you know that market. So sometimes in the, actually it works in the real life, but in the question also, sometimes they say that it is likely or, I mean, what is the expected? They say sometimes in some questions I've noticed they say that it is expected that interest rate might go up. So when they say interest rate, it is expected interest rate might go up, they are clearly giving you a direction that, you know, it's not only about two sides, it's about one side. So in that case, I will go for option. So let me conclude here. In this particular question, they say that they could increase by 1.1 up or 0.6 down. In this situation, your appropriate way is FRA it will lock. I mean, I will do calculations, I will show you, but I know it beforehand that I need a guaranteed thing because I don't know in which direction it will move. But if they say that market may go up, they don't tell me this thing, market may go up. So in that case, I probably would bet on options. Okay, anyways, we continue here. Okay, by the way, uh, so FRA will give you a fixed return it might not be the highest return, but it is fixed. Uh, options, you futures, they might have uh, both possibilities, gain and losses, or probably the gains are higher, but the risk is there. And in options, risk is less because there is no loss situation, but you have to pay the premium. And you need to see that if after paying, by the way, let me show you like this in conclusion. Let's suppose my FRA is giving me $200,000 or FRA is giving me, you know, 5% or 4%, whatever it is, but it is fixed. Uh, and then I have options. And after paying the premium, after paying the premium, it is giving me 220,000, which is probably 5.2%. I will go for that because here I have eliminated the risk of happening or not happening. Okay. So anyways, we move to reading the question. So it says treasury function guidelines emphasize the importance of mitigating an impact of adverse movements and in interest rates. However, they also allow staff to take into consideration upside risk, whatever. A local bank in Uria, which Verdigal company has de dealt before, has offered FRA 4 to 9, 5.02, 5 to 10, 5.1%. We are talking about this thing because we receive money in four months time and then we will invest money for a period of five months, that makes a total of nine months. This is today. So I am actually interested in this relationship. So we are going for 4.4 to nine months, which is giving 5.02%, okay? So this is what the FRA has made me an offer. That is very easy calculation for FRA. We will do it very quickly. Then the second thing about is three months, D futures, then our futures, 500,000 dinars, half a million dinar contract size. Prices are quoted in basis point at 100 minus annual percentage yield. So this is actually 4.16% or whatever. So they are offering me an interest rate. So you see what I'm doing. Um, I don't need December. I don't need June. This is one which we are going for because we are receiving cash in January. So we are thinking about March. December is before that. March, June is too much later. So 94.78. So 94.78, if I subtract it from 100, 100 minus 94.78%. So they are offering interest rate of 5.22%. 
See, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put money at 5.22%. Uh, I mean, this is the rate, this is the strike price which they have given me for futures rate, okay? 5.22%. Um, and then I will compare it. Now, let me tell you here, what is this 94.78, 5 uh, What is this rate today? Okay, let me let's uh, some read some question and then we'll do it together. I just don't. I just want to quickly finish the reading part. So we are going to use this one. Options on three months um, D futures because why I stopped for a while. I need to explain you what is basis. What are expired basis and how to calculate future rate and how it is different than strike rate. So these things I will explain you once we start doing solution, okay? I just want to quickly finish this reading question. Options on three month D future. So this was about futures. This is about options on future. Options on futures, so the same. So you have a strike price which is given and they have given you two strike prices. One is 94.25, which is actually 5.75%. And this is 5.4.75% because 100 minus 94.25 and 100 minus 95.25. I think this is 5.75% and it should be 4.75%. Okay. These are the two prices for options. And of course, there is a premium on that. If you see that, this is a very fantastic price, 5.75%. But it has a huge premium on that. So see the relationship between these two numbers. This is the premium. So if you really want to have a strike price of 5.75% in the market, what is the interest rate today? Today it is 4.20, which is the central bank rate. This is actually, uh, or probably not available to you, but this is the base rate. And 5.75 is a very attractive. Uh, and by the way, why I'm talking about this area? I didn't talk about put. Let's first conclude that why do we need this part? See what is happening. Um, this is the case which we say going long. Going long is where you are buying these futures. Call means you buy. Call means you buy. Um, and this is the decision. Why do you make this decision that I'm going to call interest rate? Because you have to deposit money. You have to deposit money so you want to receive interest. And when do you receive interest? When you buy something. So... For me, interest rate going down is not an issue. For me, I'm sorry, uh, interest rate going up is not an issue. For me, interest rate going down is an issue because I am an investor, I will have cash. So what happens here, like four months down the road here, maybe the market interest rates, they go down by 0.6% or whatever. And let's suppose they go to 4.5%. 2% or whatever, okay? Or let's call it not 4.2, this is too much. Probably they go down to 3.6%. They go down to 3.6%. So if I have purchased this deal, because I have bought, I have, I have bought the futures. So I will use my option and I will buy the future, which is offering 5.75%. And when I buy this future, I will receive interest of five at, at the rate of 5.75%. I will be happy. Yes, I will need to pay my premium. So what I, I will do, I will receive interest at 5.75% and I will pay my premium and I will see what is left with me in the end. So in this case, because I have to deposit. So for me, 
The issue is interest rate going down. I have to protect myself against interest rate going down. So I'm using the call option because I have cash in my hand. I want to receive interest and I will only receive interest if I buy futures. Okay, so you have any question here you want to ask, please ask. Yes, so, I want to ask a question. Please ask. Um, I, I, I could tell from the start that it's a call option, but now on which strike price to choose? There's one question that we did, and you said you look at the premium uh, of uh, that needs to be paid. Like on March, we've got 0 0.545 and 0 0.9, 0 0.098. So if you're looking at which premium you'd rather pay, you'd go for the lower one. But I think here yeah, you're supposed to choose, if you're going to say, do I buy high or do I buy low? You would definitely say, I have to buy at a lower price, which will become 94.25, I think. So I don't know how best can you really choose which strike price to choose? No, you actually, when you are doing question, you have to provide calculation for with both of them. Because the higher strike price or the lower strike price will give you more or less earnings and then there will be there will be how to say premiums to pay so this one has a higher premium 0.545 it is 0.545% and it also has a higher interest rate because it is giving you 5.75% so it is giving you a better strike price against a higher option premium. It is giving you a lower strike price against a lesser cost. So in exam purposes and in real life as well, you will provide calculations with both of them and see which one is suitable for you. And in real life, you might have a third option as well because a third bank or a fourth party is giving another rate. These are just the rates. So this is what is happening. He is giving me a deal and he's asking a cost. So this is the deal. And this is the cost of the deal. This is the deal too. And this is the cost of the deal too. Got it? Yes, I got it, sir. Thank you. In real life, you might have a third one as well. Also, when when it's when it's um, options, I have to try. I have to calculate which of the two strike prices gives me the best option. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Oh, thank you. You will provide calculation for both of them, so you will first decide whether it is a call or whether it is a put. In this case, we understand that because we are not borrowing, we are depositing cash and we are actually protecting ourselves against falling interest rates. We are protecting ourselves or hedging ourselves against falling interest rates. So I want to buy. I want to buy it now. Remember what happens. Um, so by the way, why do you want to buy? Let's call it like this again. I want to go in detail. The purpose here, I'm not like I said in the very beginning, I'm not going to provide, I'm not going to do solution with my hand. I will show you the book solution. My idea today is to do discussion and understand that why do we buy? Okay, let's discuss it. Why do we buy a call? I'm gonna stop recording for a while. Okay, we are just doing some discussion. Let me just uh, try to explain it in a shorter way. Like Mava said that, it's a future, it's a contract, okay? So, because in this particular scenario, what is happening? I'm supposed to receive interest, okay? Because on 31st of January, I will take my 27 million to the bank, I will put it to the bank and I will get some interest from the bank. How much it is, I don't know now. So if I go for this future, which is for this particular March futures, if I go, and uh, they give me 94.78, which is 5.22%. So actually what will happen if I am going for a call, it means that I will buy this future. I will buy this future. And when you buy a future, you will receive interest. When you buy 
a call option. So you are actually entitling yourself to receive interest, to receive interest at 5.22% or whatever it is. So this is what I'm protecting myself because I don't know how much interest it will be given to me by the bank. So I say, okay, whatever I receive from the bank. So if that is not something which is interesting for me, at least I have this futures deal with me. So if I receive anything, if the market goes up, market goes down, I am, I'm, I, uh, uh, this, this rate 5.22% and then it will adjust in the market as well. But this is the, the, the logic behind this is that when I, when I buy a call, I'm actually entitling myself to receive interest. And that is what I'm fixing. But when you go for a put option, when you go for this a put option, you are actually um, obliging yourself to pay interest, to pay interest, and you want to fix it. Because let's suppose that you want to borrow money after three months or six months, and you are afraid that after six months in market, the interest rates will go up. So when interest rates will go up, it will cause me a loss. So this thing will give you a benefit because you already have a deal to pay interest at this percentage. So this will, they will counter each other, okay? So this is what will happen. So a future will actually, what will happen, you will go to the market and receive interest or pay interest from the bank. And then this other future, trans, the, the future instrument you will buy or sell, it will have its own loss, it, its own gain. And that loss and gain will ultimately make you a net effect. So buying a call option is, why do, because we always said that, okay, if we have to invest money, we go for call option. If we have to borrow money, if we have to borrow money, we go for put option. But the logic, the reason behind that is that in case of investment, when I'm investing money, I am entitling my investing means I will receive. So if I receive and if I receive less, what will happen? So I want to entitle myself for receiving some fixed interest, for receiving some interest. Okay. So this is why we go for a call option here. Okay. So this is done here. Um, now, as discussed before, what we need to do, we need to ca make calculation for three things, FRAs, futures, and options. Uh, FRA calculation generally is very easy and very straightforward. Future calculation could be slightly tricky, and then some of the data from future calculation you will use in options as well, by the way. The data which you will produce in, in future calculation, some of that will be used here. Uh, and here in this future uh, interest rate futures, I want to explain you the basis point, the expired basis, unexpired basis. How do we calculate the future prices on that date? Because what will happen that future prices will change. So today it is 4.2%. It may go up to 1 by 1.1%, 1 .1%, which means that market goes to 5.30. It may go down by 0.6%, which means market could be 3.6%. And on this particular date, the future price, what will be the future price? The you know, uh, because I will only get benefit, what will be the market price? What is my strike rate? I do have a strike rate here, which is I'm going to lock myself. So this is the strike rate, which for future, which we are going to lock ourselves. And then we will compare that what will be the future price in the market here as compared to these things. And then we compare this number with this number and see whether we make a gain or we make a loss, okay? So let's see some calculations. Like we said before that I'm not going to perform numbers myself here today. We'd have done quite a lot of them. I just want to show you the solutions provided by the book and we see that how do they do that. Now, before I move on, let me tell you for this question, and this applies to other questions as well. There is always a longer format and a shorter format. The first format, which is the longer format, this is the one which I have used in most of my questions, which you have seen previously. Uh, forward rate agreement. Then it comes to um, futures. So forward was straightforward. Let me just show you here. 
And by the way, there is a shorter format as well. We will use today the short one. Long one we will not do. But for forward rate, I can show you. So what happens that um, forward rate agreement was given to you. It says that you have a forward rate agreement of four to nine months, which is 5.02%. Okay. So you will, this is your fixed rate, 5.02%. So now in case of here, it says that if the market interest rate, they go up by 1.1%, which is actually very good for you. It goes to 5.3, but you will not get 5.3 because bank will give you 30 basis point less. So the bank will give you only 5%. Okay. Bank will give you only 5%. So if the bank gives you 5%, so 5% on 27 million for five months, the bank will give you 562,000. But because the market interest rate goes to 5.3% and you have got an FRA of 5.02%, so market interest rate goes up. You are effectively market interest rate goes up. So you need to return back money to the bank. Okay, because you are you have promised with the bank I that my rate is FRA is 5.02. So any rate above that, you have to pay cash to the bank. So you need to make payment to the bank, which is equal to 5.3 minus your FRA rate into 5 by 12 into 27 million, 31,500, you will pay to the bank. And you get a net benefit of 531. And 531, actually, when you divide it over 27 million, so it is only 4.72% effective rate. So the bank has promised with you 5.02. But because you returned something to the bank, you get 4.72%. If the interest rate, they fall by 0.6% and they come to 3.6. So you go to a bank and you put money in the bank, the bank will give you only 3.3% because 30 basis points they will deduct. So when they deduct 30 basis point, which is 0 0.3, they give you 3.3%, which is 371. And you are very unhappy because you were expecting a higher interest. So you go to the bank which, with which you made an FRA and you say, now you pay me the difference of 5.02 and 3.6. So the market rate, which is this one, 3.6, not 3.3, not what you receive, what the market rate is. The difference 5.02 into 3.6, and this time you will receive money from the bank. And it is 159, you end up with the same number, it is 4.72%. So you are getting 531,000, which is 4.72% effective interest rate. Um, and you actually, this is 100% confirmed. Now, wherever the market goes down, it goes to 20%, it goes to 0%, you are not bothered about. There is no risk in that. Uh, there is no ambiguity in that. You have locked yourself at 4.72%, which is $531,000 or 531,000 dinars you will get in any case. This is very straightforward calculation. Uh, you do it with a shorter method or you do it with a longer method. It's the same calculation. And it is quite straightforward. The benefit of FRA is that it becomes risk-free. It's very obvious. It is fixed. Okay, any question here you want to ask? Uh, so small question, uh, yeah. why we are hedging uh, for the uh, increase in interest rate? No, we are actually not hedging an increase in interest rate. We are seeing the two possible scenarios, what can happen. Okay, so do we have to show uh, our calculations increase because uh, in that case, it's always beneficial for us, right? Yes, you do need to show the outcome that what can happen in the worst and in the best case, because they told you that it could go up by 1.1 and it could go down by, uh, you know, 0.6%. Uh, so you see that this is what happens if 1.1, this is what happens with 3.6. Yeah, even in question, they return, uh, if interest rate increased by 1.1. Yeah, of course, of course, why not? Yeah. We, we have to show that. Yeah, okay. And thank you so much. Sir. So then you go to futures. For futures, uh, what you need to do, you are actually going long. Go long. You are buying this thing, okay? Um, now, for futures, what happens that there are two types of, two formats of presentation and calculation. 
One is a slightly longer method, which is given in the beginning. And this is the method which we have been doing before. So I just, I will not show you this full method because my focus today will be on this alternative presentation and calculation, because this is a shorter method and you can do it much faster and, 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 and more quickly, okay? And in exam, it will give you equal marks. But I just want to show you a few things from here first, um, because those things will remain, whether you do long method or short method, these things will remain same. First of all, you need to understand that what is basis, okay? And what are unexpired basis? Two things we need to understand. So basis is actually the difference, the difference between your current rate and the strike price. For example, your current rate interest is 4.20. If you subtract this 4.20%, uh, if you subtract it from 100%, what do you get? You get 100 minus 4.2. 95.8. 95.8, okay, 95.8, let's not call it percentage. So 95.8, this is currently the spot rate because this is the current market rate. And uh, this is, if I see that 100 minus 4.8, the price is 95.8. But they are offering me the future, the March future, the March future was offered to us at 94.78, okay? So remember this number, 94.78. If I come back here again, You see this 94.78. So this is 95.80. This is today. And I say, I want to get interest rate future three months from today. So they say after three months, it is 94.78. So 1.02 is the difference. And this is the time difference due to the time. Uh, this is the difference due to uh, this four months time or whatever it is, because raise, I think it was 1st of October and I am buying it today, which future will be exercised on 31st of March or whatever date. So there is a time difference there, six months. Out of the six months period, they are charging 1.02. And this is called basis. And this basis will expire with the time period. So we have discussed this thing before as well in our lecture that this is here, as the time will pass, it will become zero. So now what will happen? We expect that the strike price, which they are giving me is 94.78. And that strike price will, and the basis which are inbuilt with the strike price, they will lapse and expire and they will become zero after six months time period. Now, my contract here, uh, we call them unexpired basis because what will happen that I will execute this thing on 31st of January and the future is for 31st of March. So this is today. The strike price here is whatever the basis, total basis are 1.02. These total basis are for six months. So it is decreasing and decreasing. So the difference, the gap is decreasing. And these two will become equal in six months time. So two months before here, some of the bases are still unexpired. So how do you calculate 1.02 divided by six multiplied by two, you get 0 0.34. This 0 0.34 is the number which we are going to use a lot. The 0 0.34 is actually will determine the future price, the price of the future in that market, because we say that, I suppose, understand. Today, the price of the future is 94.78. Okay, no, not today. Let me see. Let me show you again. Uh, the price today is 95.80, this one. In six months time, 
it will be 94.78, which they promised me that you get March future for 94.78. It is 95.80. Okay. So what will be the price of this? Because I want to sell this, this instrument to someone. What will be the price of this instrument on this date? This is the question. What will be the price of this instrument on this date? For this purpose, we will use the basis, whatever are the unexpired basis. Because when it comes to 31st, 31st of March, the price is 94.78. But I am not waiting until 31st March. I will sell it. I will you know, execute it on 31st of January, which is my date. So what will be the price of this thing on that date? Remember that you forecast your currency rate. We make a forecast for currency rate by using interest rate parity. Remember, now let me just make a reconnection to you people. These two are different things, but concept is same. If I talk about currency, your currency risks, what do you do in currency? You have a spot rate. They give you a spot rate. Let's suppose dollar euro spot rate today is 1.0, 1 point, not zero, let's call it 1.20. No, 1.15 dollar to euro. Then they might give you, you know, you might have a forward rate, a strike rate or forward rate, which is given to you 1.17. But this is what is given to you. What will happen on that date in the market? That is unknown. That is unknown. How do you calculate that future rate? How do you calculate that future rate? You calculate this future rate using the interest rate parity. You have used this interest rate parity thing to calculate the future currency rate. And that future currency rate is not equal to the forward rate. It might be different. Similarly, I have got my future here for this interest rate. The today's price was 100 minus 4.2, 95.8. This is spot. This is today. On 31st of March, they have given me a price of 94.78. How, how much it will be on 31st of January? That I will calculate using not interest rate parity, uh, um, uh, exchange interest rate parity. In fact, I will, you, I, I'm going to use the basis formula. This basis, 0 0.34. So this is very important basis thing. Now, what will happen here? 0 0.34, I understand the basis. So now if say it says that if interest rates increase by 1.1, so they go to 5.3%. I'll just have only this part of this here, and then I will not continue. I will move on to the short method, okay? So I just want to show you something from here because you might remember this format before. So investment return as above, 562,500. How do you get this 562,500 if the interest rate goes to 5.3%? So because interest rate is 5.3, but the bank will give you 5%. Multiplied by 27 million, multiplied by 5 by 12. So that's very logical. If interest rate go up, what the bank is going to give me, 562,500. Oh, I put this money in my pocket. I can put this money in my pocket and walk away. But then I remember I've got a future as well. And I need to settle that thing. That future I need to settle. I can't take this all of this money home although the bank will give me. So I go to the bank, I take my 562, but then I have already purchased a future. So what happened to that future? Is it making a gain or loss? So what will happen to the future? Expected future price. So how do you calculate expected future price? How did we did it before? We said 100, remember 100 minus 4.2, I said before, because on that date, the interest rate in the market was 4.2. So you said 95.8. This is how you did before, but that was on 1st of December. But when you come to the date, you said that it interest rate will go up. So now this is 100 minus 5.3. And minus the unexpired basis, this 0 
So your future price is 94.36 here. Okay, so first you understand that how did you calculate this number? Because you need to find out what is the future price. So I bought the future for 94.78. I bought the futures for 94.78. And these are not options. These are futures. I must execute them. I must execute it. Okay, so I have the execution. The strike price is 94.78. But what will be the market price? That will determine if I make a gain or if I make a loss. Now, remember, because you interest rate went up, because interest rate went up and you make a gain on interest rate, you are compulsorily making, going to make a loss on the future. Remember, what is the future? It is a derivative. A derivative is an instrument which derives its value from the value of underlying instrument. And if you make a gain on the uh, actual item, we call it hedged item and hedged instrument, the gain on hedged item will be countered by the loss on the hedged instrument. So if you make a gain on the currency itself, which is the hedged item, you are definitely going to make a loss on the hedged instrument, which is the future. So first thing I understood that immediately that, oh, I made a gain here because interest rate went up. If interest rate went up, future price will go down. And that is going to make me a loss on that. And how do I calculate that? So I've got this 9436. This is the expected price on 31st of January. And this is my strike price, which I have to execute. So 0.9436 is the market price and 0.9478 is the strike price. So that is going to cause me a loss. You find out the difference. Multiply it with D500,000 into 3 by 12 into 90. What is this 90? 90 was the number of contracts. Because you remember 27 million and 27 million. And um, I did not show you the calculation for this number of finding the number of contracts because that was rather very simple. If I divide it with 500,000, how, how much do I get? 27 million divided by 500,000, it makes me 54. But future is for two months. I'm doing it for five months. So into divided by three times five. So divided by five by three, because future is for three months period. So 54, but 54 will not cover me because 54 contracts are for three months period. I need five months. So I multiply with five divided by three, I get to a number 90. So I have 90 contracts of 500,000 each for three months period, multiply with this thing, and that will calculate my loss of 47. So end of the day, net return is 515250. This is 4.58%. Now this is actually, um, I think slightly less than FRA. FRA was 531,000. Now this is 515,000, so this is slightly less. But then there is other side of the future as well. If interest rates, they go down to 3.6%, what will happen? Again, I will go to the bank and this time, how this number was calculated, I will put my money in the bank, not at 3.6%, but on 3.3% because bank will give 30 basis points less into 27 million into five by 12, because I put money in the bank for five months. I get 371, I made a loss. I'm unhappy with this thing because interest rates went down. But when interest rate went down, future prices, they go up. Now you see what will be the price of this thing. You see here now, this time, you calculate that on 31st of January, you do have a strike price of 0 0.9478, which is the same one. But what is the market price of my instrument? Oh, market price has gone up, 96, you see here. So now 9606-9478, multiply the same numbers, I made a gain. So because I made a loss, I made a loss on my hedged item, which was dinar. Therefore, there was a gain on the hedge instrument, which was the future. And the gain and loss on future, you need to calculate the market price on that date. And for the market price on that date, 
you need to know 100 is sure, 3.6 is given. The issue is you only need to find out the unexpired basis. Okay, so this is not an issue. Calculating 100 is always there. 5.3 I took from here, that's not an issue. The issue is I need to calculate the basis. So please make sure that your basis calculation is correct. How much are your unexpired basis? And how did we calculate the basis before? We said that this was today's price, spot rate today. This is the future, which I have purchased the contract, total 1.02, and then two months remaining out of six months. Because I bought it on 1st of October, October, November, December, January, February, March. So it was a six months contract, but I gave it on 31st of January. So February and March, two months are remaining. So 0 0.34 is the unexpired basis. So that value I will receive. So this is, uh, yeah, you get it here. So 515,000, 515, 250, 4.58, 4.58. So, so this is uh, yeah. A small question. The current yes. labor, like uh, that's where I am a little bit lost. So which LIBOR to take when we are uh, checking? So should we take 4.20, the one which is on uh, 1st of October, or the one which... Where, is where do you want to use 4.20? Uh, in, in that line, uh, expected future price, if you go. Here? Yes. Yeah, here. Which no. LIBOR? No, you will, you will take the current rate, this one. Okay, okay. 4.20 was on 1st of October. Okay. So it says 100 minus LIBOR minus this unexpired basis. And this is on that particular date for which you are doing calculation. 4.2 I used initially when I was calculating the basis because this is at the beginning when the contract was signed that was 1st of October. So on 1st of October, I take 4.20. Now I'm already four months down the line. Now I'm on 31st of January. So I will be taking 31st of January rate. Do you, always, do you always minus the um, unexpired basis? Yeah. Always minus that one. Because you are going to, you have call options. Okay. So if it's put options, you add it? Whatever are the unexpired basis, then if you are selling it or you are buying it. Okay. So it's always minus. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this is for future calculation. Is, is it clear? Any question? It's very logical. It's very logical. I put my money in the bank. I get at 5% interest not 5.3 because 30 basis, they will give me less. I put my money in the bank, I get 3.3%. But because interest rate went up, I will make a loss. Here, I will make a gain. And what is the loss? The loss will be the difference in the strike price and the expected price of the future. What is the expected price? 100 minus 5.3 minus unexpired basis. So 94.36 is the price of the thing in my hand and actually, and this is what is the market price. Now you may ask me, why is it loss or why is it gain? How do you determine? See, 9436, I have buying the call option. I'm buying it for 9436 and selling it for 9478. When you are buying at 9436 and selling, so there is a difference in this rate and that determines your loss. Or in other cases, you might be thinking or you might make a rule in your mind, which is the rule for all the derivatives, that if one side goes up, the other goes down. If you make a gain here, if the interest rate will increase uh, and you make a gain on the interest, then you make a loss on the other side. This is for when you are investing money. Uh uh, just a small question. So uh on the future price, the like if we go with your method, like step one, step two, step three, uh, in step three, we will have a selling rate. And then we will have a buy rate and then it will be a net effect. So if you can show me in that method, I think it would be really helpful. 
which method uh we, we do right uh step one uh we determine if it's a call or put in, in step two uh we uh we do it on the spot market and in step three we'll see what was the buying rate what was so the this is see 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 here this is the strike price okay and in this case the strike price is the buying price because you have buying future okay yes yes yes, yes. and this is the selling rate so you buy at 9, 0.9478 and you sell at 0.9437. So you are buying expensive and you are selling it cheap. And you make a loss because what do you have? You have buy a call option. So you are buying at this rate, 9478. There is something, the market price is 9436. And you have put a contract on your head that I will buy it for 78. Forget about 94. Talk about 78 and 36. You are, you promise someone, I will buy something for 78. And then you are selling it for 36 because the market price is 36. So you are making a loss. Okay. Clear? Uh, yes, yes, it's understood. Okay, let's do like this. Uh, okay, we have done this uh, future calculation. I mean, once you are clear with the futures, options will be easier because in option, you will only have to add two things. One is the option premium and second is at whether you are going to exercise it or not, okay? Um, two lines will be additional, but I want to show you the same calculation in another way. Uh, because we all have different approaches and different, you know, uh, learning methods. Sometimes there are few methods. Some method is it looks easier to me. The other method might look easier to you. So let's see another alternative calculation presentation. So this is alternative method for future agreement. Okay. So I'm not going to, I'll just quickly read this thing up. So it becomes very clear to you. March contracts to buy 94.78. This was given in the question at 5.22. How do we get 100 minus 94.78? This 94.78 was given to you in the question that you will buy a contract at this rate. I will show you so that it becomes clear to you where this number comes from. So this is 94.78, okay? This was your March contract. So if we come back again, So 94.78, you purchase the contract. They need to cover the start of the investment 31st of January, which means four months, October, November, December, January. The number of contracts required will be 27 million into 0 0.5 multiplied by five divided by three. So you calculate 27 million divided by 500,000. And each contract is for three months, but you need for five months. So you multiply with five by three and you get 90 contracts. So far, it is so clear. Now, opening basis. So if you remember that opening basis was 1.02, you calculated before because 5.22%, this 94.78 minus 95.20, the difference you did six months and you remember 0 0.34 two months unexpired basis, 0 0.34, and they are putting it as a percentage. So this is your unexpired basis. So if rates rise to a base rate of 5.3, why do I say 5.3? Uh, because, yeah, because they said that if they go up by 1.1%, remember? 1.1%, so 5.3% plus 0.34% unexpired. So you get 5.64%. And then if the base rates fall to 3.6, which means 4.2 minus 0 0.6, it is 3.6, you add bases now. Now this time you are not subtracting the bases, you are adding the bases. So it becomes 3.94%, okay? This is alternative calculation. Now, once you find these numbers, rest is very easy. See here. So base rate, now it is 4.2. If it goes up by 1.1, it is 5.3%. But if I put my money in the bank, bank will deduct 30 basis, bank will give me 5%. Okay, so market rate is 5.3. For me, the rate is 5%.
But then my opening rate is 5.22. What was 5.22? 5.22 was my contract rate. If you come back to up here, this was 94.78. This is my future rate, which this is my strike price, which is equal to 5.22%, okay? Strike price I'm talking about. So I think like this now, I've got a strike price of 5.22. The market price is already 5.64. So I'm making a loss of 0.42%. So if I make a loss of 0.42%, so it comes to bank my earnings. This is my earning. This is my loss. And this is my net. My net gain is 4.58%. You multiply 4.58% into 27 million into 5 by 12, you get to the same number. This is so damn easy. What you need to do, you need to find out at what rate I will put it in the bank. I will put it in the bank at 5%. This is my earnings. Okay, 5.3 is the market. The bank deduct 30 basis. Bank will give me 5% interest. That's fantastic. But then what happens to my other thing? Future loss gain. So future price will be, my future contract is 5.22%, but market has already gone to 5.64%. How do we get 5.64? The market interest rate plus the prevailing unexpired basis. So this is 5.64. So actually what is happening that <coughs> I have a contract price of 5.64. I have to buy interest at 5.64 and my selling strike price is 5.22. So I, it is making a loss. So 0.42% I make a loss. That 0.42 I subtract, I get 4.58%. I can do this calculation without any presentation simply on my calculator. If you've got a calculator and you know how to use the basis because you are going to use the basis there. So add the basis into your contract rate, find out your market price. This is the prevailing, now this is the prevailing interest price, okay? So 5.22%, this is my agreed strike price. This is my strike price. This is my expected market rate. So market is 5.64, strike is 5.22. So this is buy because I have a buying contract. So I will buy and I will sell. So I'm buying something for 5.22% and I'm selling it for 5.64%. I'm making a loss of 0.48%. So if bank gives me five, I make a loss of 0.42. My net gain is 4.58%. 4.58% multiplied by 27 million, multiplied by five by 12. I come to the number straight away. This calculation is much more easier and simpler. This is actually a mathematical, how to say logic. This is mathematical logic. Any question about this calculation? No question. Does that look you difficult or easy? Oh, quite easy to track. Quite sim simpler or difficult? Yeah, easy to track. Yeah, it's, it's a bit easy in this. I way. mean, you just need to do three numbers. You just need to do three numbers. Expired basis, you will calculate how much is expired basis 0 0.34. That is simple calculation. Even if you have not done the previous method, still you can do it now. And you add this thing to find out the, cur the current market price. This is the current market price or current not. I mean, this is the price of the mark of future or, uh, you know, on 31st of January. So this is the expected price. And this is my contract price, 5.22. And the difference between 5.64, 5.22 is my loss. The difference between these two is my loss. And this is, of course, my gain. So from gain, I subtract loss and I multiply. The same happens here as well. If it goes to 0.6% down, so then what happens? Base rate is 3.6, but the bank will give me 3.3, 30 basis point less. This is straight away, straight same. It does not change. Strike price does not change. That is the same 0 0.9478. So 5.22% will remain same. This is my strike price. But what is the market price now? Market price is 3.94. How do you get it? 3.6 plus 3.4, 0.34. 
So here I make a gain because what is happening, I have, you know, buying a call option. This is a call option and you have a buying thing. So what happens that this is your, uh, this is the market price and this is the strike price and the difference is your gain. And then you add this thing because the bank will give you 3.3 only. So you add 3.3 with 1.28 it gives you 4.58, the same number terms. So this is your future thing. And I suggest that uh, if you want to do, I mean, follow this method in exam and uh, it's much more quicker. Actually, first we explain this one because this is in more detail. It goes step-by-step -step approach. This is a little bit quicker approach. Then you go to options now. So once we're done with the future, we go to the options. Again, many numbers will remain same. In options, what happens that they give us two options, two numbers. Either you can buy it for 94.25 or 95.25, okay? So let me show you where these numbers we have taken. If I go back to options table, which they have given me question data, these are these numbers, <clears throat> two strike prices. 94.25, 95.25. And this is the premium for this one. And this is the premium for this one. You ideally should be providing calculations for both strike prices. And uh, then see which one gives you which result. So it says that options agreement <clears throat> 94.25, which means 5.75%, because 100 minus 94.25 or 95.25 gives you this one. So these two are your strike prices actually now. What are these two? These are your strike prices. And what will you do? You will compare them with the expected future prices. You will compare them with the expected future prices, and then you will decide, should I exercise or not? Okay, so this is here. Now, there is an argument for either the solution illustrate, uh, it says that it can be chosen. 4.75 is chosen. So they are actually providing calculation only on this one. Why they are doing it for this one? Because you already have 4.2. It is much closer to the current price and 5.75 is too fantastic. So you actually should be doing for both, but he is providing you solution only for 4.75%. Once you do for 4.75, you understand, then you can do for that as well. So which is the closest way to the current base and provides in uh, compensation of interest rate fall at a lower premium compared to 5.75, okay. Again, 90 contracts will be needed and we are doing only for one. We are doing it for 4.75, okay? Or 95.25. What will happen? Interest rate, they go up with 1.1%. So it is 5.3. The bank will only give you five. And then what is your price? You have a strike price, you are choosing 4.75. And what is the closing rate? 5.64. You did it before. How did you do it? 100 minus uh, this 5.3, the current rate on that date, minus the unexpired basis, whatever it is. Actually, here you will do it uh, not with this method, but you will add it up. I'm sorry, because you are doing alternative calculations. So you will add up 5.3 plus 0.34. Okay, uh, because this is alternative calculation in terms of percentages. So it is 5.64. This number we used before as well when we were doing option uh, futures. Okay. So, so just a small question. Yeah. Before we proceed. Uh, this 5.64 and 3.94 is expected uh, price for the liver or expected future price? Future price, price. expected future price. Okay. Liver, will, okay. liver will be 5.3. Okay, okay, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Thank you so much, yes. Libor will be 5.3. If I put money in the bank, bank will give me lower than Libor with, at five or 3.3, but the future price will be 5.74. So I've got future prices. My strike price will remain same, 4.75. It will not change. Yes, thank you so much, understand. And future price could be this one. Now, because I have an option to buy and sell, 
So if I say buy at 5.6 and sell at 4.75, of course, nobody will do that. You say do not exercise. So you will not exercise this option. But what will happen? You have to pay a premium of 0 0.098. This was given before in the data. Do you want me to show you that? 0 0.098 yeah, here, if I go up, this is the premium because we are taking this one. So this is the premium we are talking about. 0 0.0098 and this is in percentages because the question says, the data says that premiums are in annual percentages. So this is 0 .00, 0 0.0098. When you convert it into percentages, it will be a different number but it's an annual percentage. So I come down here and we see here, yeah. So 0.098%. So what is my outcome? Outcome is actual plus option premium. What is my actual? Actual, I put the money in the bank and I get 5% and I pay my premium. It is my cost. So I subtract five minus 0.098. I get 4.908 in reality. I'm not exercising my option. I'm directly taking the money from the bank. I do not exercise. See, it says don't exercise because it is not favorable. I let it lapse. It expires. I just ignore it. But this premium I already have paid. So this is my cost. Net I get 4.902%, which is 551.471. If it falls down to by 0.6%, then what happens? The LIBOR goes to 3.6. Bank will give me earnings of 3.3%. But then I find out my strike price is 4.75 like before. But the market is 3.94. How do you get it? 3.94, 3.6, the LIBOR, plus your unexpired basis, 0.34. And that makes you 3.94%. Now, it makes sense because you are have an option to buy. So buy and sell. Remember? Because I have an option to buy. So buying something at 3.94, selling it at 4.75, that makes sense. I will probably exercise it. And 0.81% here, the difference. So this time what happens that I have got this 3.31%. This is my actual return. Plus I get my, I subtract this thing, my how to say, uh, add up this 0.81% because on exercise, I'm making a gain. And then I subtract my premium. So three things will happen. Bank will give me, I will earn from the bank, which is less money. I'm not happy. So I exercise the option. I make 0.81% gain. This will be plus, this will be plus. And I will pay my premium on the on this uh, option. Net is four point zero one two. It makes me four hundred fifty one thousand. It makes me four hundred fifty one thousand three hundred and fifty. Give me a minute, please. So here, because I did so here, this was plus, this was minus. I did not exercise, so nothing here. But here, this was my bank interest, which was less. So I exercised the option and I made some benefit on the option and I paid my premium and I get to this number. Is it clear? It's not a difficult calculation at all. Just use this format in exam. Just use this format. What you, all you need, all you need here is unexpired basis. That's all. Because this number is given in the data. This number is given in the data. This number, you subtract 30 basis point, you come. And this number is given in the data. This is actually the same number. And you just have to find out the expected future price, option price. That's all. Once you've calculated this thing, rest is easy. And how do you find out? Just you found out this number like this one plus the unexpired basis, 0 0.34. And you put it here. And this one, we do not exercise. Uh, we will not exercise because exercising will give us a loss. Uh, exercising is not good here. We only uh, take our benefit from the bank and we pay the uh, premium on the uh, 
option, that's all. Any question you have? This is very straightforward, very simple, very quick to do. No, 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 you can apply this method on borrowing and investing in both. Right now we are doing investing. We are not doing borrowing, by the way. This is an investing scenario, but you can apply it on both, uh, uh, both cases. Uh, thank you, sir. Now, this was really helpful. Uh, this. Now, see here, what will happen? When you come to conclusion, what is happening? If you say that FRAs are giving you how much? Uh, let me come down to alternative where it says FRA was giving me 531,000. 531,000. Uh, it is fixed. So I can think about FRA. Future is giving me 515 this side or that side. Not really very much interested in future. In options, actually, I may get 551,000, which is much higher, but it is possible that. So if you see that, which one to choose? Option may give you 551, which is because your FRA was 531, okay? 531,000. This is 551. That looks very attractive. It is 20,000 more, but it has this one as well, because it is possible that if interest rate go up, you make this thing. But if interest rate go down, you will end up here. So this one is fixed. So if you talk about, uh, because we do not know, that maybe this is like 50% chance it go up, 50% chance it go down. So then I'm not sure whether I will end up here or I will end up there. Then in that case, I will go for 531, which is my FRA, because that looks the best option because it is giving me a firm 531,000. Yes, if this is more likely, then I might think of doing this as well. So you need to do some commentary, you need to do some discussion, so clearly what you should be saying here, like I told you that because we do not know the chances of going up and going down, what is the percentage? Because there are always probabilities. When in this question in real life, we use probabilities. Here, they have not told us uh, what is going to happen. So, I mean, because in real life, actually you do have probabilities as well that what is the probability of this happening? What is the probability of this happening? And then you take a decision. I mean, in exam, they don't tell us, so we just go like this. Any other thing you want to ask? I would suggest you to watch this, uh, I mean, read this question again, and if needed, listen to this lecture again, but it will solve many of your problems with futures, options, and FRA.